Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Katie, and today you're gonna get to check out my dream car. Stay tuned. And if I say it enough, it gets ingrained in my head, and I start to see. Alright, so we made the six hour trek from my house in Washington to Bend, Oregon to pick up this car. And it's so loud. I'm probably going to have to go inside to tell you guys the story. And then I promise I won't keep you waiting anymore. The story of the car. So this whole thing came about because... Um, a friend of mine on Instagram reached out to me and said, hey, there's this car, it's right up your alley, I think you need to go check it out, the price is incredible and it looks like it's in really good condition. And so she sent me the link to the listing and I contacted the uh, owner of the car within hmm, 24 hours or less of him posting it and the response that I got back from the owner was that the car was already tentatively sold and that he would let me know if that changed and I waited a couple of days, didn't hear anything, assumed the car was sold, let it go, put it out of my mind. Then on Sunday, Mother's Day, I got a call from the owner and he said the previous guy that was going to buy it, uh, logistics kind of fell through, he was in France, he was trying to figure out how he was going to get the car and uh, it didn't work out. So he said 13 people reached out to him uh, within 24 hours wanting to buy the car and he picked me because I was the only woman. So I'm not gonna lie, I had a benefit being a woman this time. Uh, this car was owned for 25 years by the same couple and it was his wife's car and sadly she passed away in January of this year and with that he decided it's time to make a few changes in his life and move on and do something new. So me also being a woman and the car basically being completely woman owned its entire existence, he thought it was only right for the car go to a woman again. Um, <laughs> so we hopped in the car, drove six hours to Bend, test drove the car. We went through all the issues with the owner. He told us the story and it was, the car is just incredibly preserved. It has been well taken care of and I can't wait to show you guys the car. I am going to go ahead and take you guys outside and give you a walkthrough of the car and tell you kind of what's wrong with it, all the cool things that it came with, you have got to see what it came with. Um, and let's get started, I won't keep you waiting any longer. All right, cue that video montage. one of 3,000 ever released into the US and I honestly don't even know how many of those are even left. Very few of them are in this condition and 
The ones that are are selling for between eight and twelve thousand dollars. I'm sorry, it's not the Mark IV Supra yet, but one day I will have one. Um, I'm really, really excited to own this car, and I can't wait to just fix all the little things on it and just make sure it stays at the top quality that it is. Take it to shows, do all that kind of stuff. Just really enjoy this car and honor um, the previous owners and how much they really truly loved this car. This car has 124,000 original miles. Booyah! So, yes, this car came about, I saw it was listed, I'll be honest, I'll tell you exactly what I paid for it. The owner had it listed for $4,000, and I believe that is because it had a list of small things that were wrong with it, but one of the most major things that he thought was wrong was that the rear differential was making noise. And when he said that in the ad, I didn't really worry too much about it, but when I drove it, it was really loud. But as I was driving it, I noticed an increase in sound as I went faster, and I also noticed an increase in sound when I was cornering to one way. I can't remember if it was the right or the left, but regardless, one direction in particular made it way louder. Which this made me go, I don't think it's a differential. I think that this car has a wheel bearing problem. I am driving the car right now. Um, it does have some noise in the rear end, which I was aware of before I came and looked at it. Um, I'm hopeful it's a wheel bearing. So the obvious things in this video that you're going to see is that the seats are a little bit worn. So it is cracking and ripping in a few places. Um, the other things that are wrong is that it still does have the factory stereo in it. The CD player doesn't really work. The driver's side window switches don't work very well and the power sunroof motor is pretty weak. So it does have a small oil leak and it is leaking somewhere onto the engine or the manifold and it's really smelly. You can see smell it while you're driving um but it did have a lot of the major oil leaks fixed so yeah whatever i'll deal with that later um the rear sound was the most concerning and that is kind of why i am stuck today so um i did make the decision to go ahead and try to drive the car back to at least hood river where we were staying for the night it was fine it was loud but it made it um, and then I promptly took it in to our local Les Schwab Tire Center here and had them check it out and they did confirm it is indeed a wheel bearing that needs to be replaced. So, now I am kind of freaked out about driving it because I don't want my wheel to go flying off um, and die. So, I am currently in the process of waiting to hear back from Toyota to see if they can get this car fixed in the next couple of days so I can go home. So the thing that is super, super cool about this car is that everything is stock. Nothing has been messed with, nothing has been modded. As far as I can tell, it's the, everything's entirely original. The speakers are original. The headset is original, the head unit. Um, everything on the back speakers, original. So that in itself is incredible. Nothing um, on the interior plastics is cracked. It still has all of the OEM hardware. Uh, it came with the original owner's manual in the plastic bag still. Hello, I love stuff like this. So it came with the original owner's manual and not only that, but I got this massive thing of records, service records. Since they've owned it for 25 years, they kept almost every single receipt. This car just had the timing belt done, the clutch replaced, the flywheel replaced, like, what else? So many things. I'll run down a full list if you want to see everything that this car has had done to it. But it drives beautifully. It drives like a brand new freaking car, and if I wasn't so worried about the wheel bearing, I would have driven it a little more spiritedly, but I took it really easy because I wanted to make it back in one piece. 
but oh my god, this car drives nicer or as nice as my 2008 Scion. And I'm saying that in like the feel of uh, it not being sloppy. Like, so I have been looking for an all track for at least three years. I've wanted one ever since I got my first Celica when I was 16 years old. And this one came up and I feel so incredibly lucky to have been given the chance to own this car. Like this guy was about crying when we left and I so feel for him, but I am so grateful that he picked me to buy this car. So in honor of him and his late wife and just to honor what everything that they did to preserve this car, I am going to keep the name that they named it, which is Cakey. So this new car is called Cakey. Uh, build plans. If you want to hear build plans, let's dive into that. Basically, the only things that I'm planning on doing are things that can be easily removed because the value of this car is that it is 100% stock. Um, it has had a couple of fender benders that were fixed, no major damage, and the car was completely repainted in 2003, um, so that's why it actually looks really quite nice. Um, so I'd love to do just a kind of cat back exhaust, probably the JDM side markers, some rims, probably some rims. I'm keeping these stock rims though. Just to have, because right now they have Kumo X's on them. Those are really freaking nice tires. The car will be kept stock. Anything that gets put on it has to be able to be unbolted because I want to keep this car preserved in its very fine state. I will not be repainting. I will maybe do a wrap, maybe. I don't know, we'll see. But probably take the windows, probably put in a new head unit and just keep the stock head unit, um, try to get it repaired so that if I do ever sell this car, they do have access to the factory head unit again. So minor upgrades on things like that just to make it a little more up to date and a little more fun to drive. All right, but I also wanna show you all the super cool paperwork that came with this. So let's check that out. So here is all the papers that came with it. Sorry about the weird lighting, but um, this is how detailed the previous owner was. They literally wrote down every single time they filled up the tank and where they drove to, how many miles they got, what it cost them. So I have records all the way back to 1995 basically until 2020 so it and they put down all the maintenance that they've done every time that they did oil changes what they replaced air filters when they got new tires rotated like the level of detail that this gentleman and his wife had for this car is absolutely insane and I'm like in love with the detail. Wow, super awesome. Um, here is one of the really cool things. So here is the original window sticker for the car. As you can see, it was, there we go, for $26,000. And here's all the upgrades, optional leather, the sunroof, the system 10, air conditioning, anti-lock brake system. I love. <laughs> and then everything else here is just all of the other information that they have. I won't go through all of these because obviously there's a lot of personal information on here. And I gotta protect people's personal information, but yeah, this car is so well maintained. The records are incredible. This is cool. This is a very valuable car. All right, guys, there you have it. So this is my 1990 Toyota Celica Alltrack. 
one of 3,000 ever made. It is one of my dream cars. It's one that I plan to hang on to for a very long time. And I'm just excited to drive this and continue spreading knowledge and awareness about the amazing, amazingness of these cars. Um, so few people actually know about this car and I think if they did, they would have a lot more um, following than they do because they're just fantastic. They are made for mountain passes and all wheel drive, turbocharged, about 200 horsepower, just a freaking joy to drive. So, if you guys want to see more about the all track, see what happens with it in the future, repair videos, vlogs, all of the good things. Make sure to like the video, make sure to subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you know every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching Katie's Garage. Enjoy cakey. I'll see you soon.